today. Brain Recycling is over in Eugene, kind of right in between Eugene and Springfield. And I am here with Miss Emily. She is an educator that works here. Some of you may have seen her before. And this is Ethan, our special guest. And she works with a lot of you. And today we get to learn about how we can reuse our stuff that we think is junk. And they've done some great stuff here. You're gonna see some cool artwork. You're gonna see some really creative ideas that people have used to reuse junk. So um, Miss Emily and Eco Chick are gonna take this party on a ride. It's gonna be a little bumpy today. So as we're moving about, we're gonna walk around a lot. So pardon the bumpy screen. We'll try to keep it smooth. Um, and then always at the end, we'll have time for some questions and, um, and then we'll have our story time. So I'm going to let Miss Emily and Eco Tink take it over. Okay. Hey everybody, I'm so happy to be with you today. We are at Brain Recycling. Uh, Brain is an environmental organization that has been around for almost 50 years in Eugene and Springfield. And so some of you may have visited us before. Uh, we sell building materials here. And um, the building materials that we sell are kind of special because they've already been used at least one time. So we like to think of ourselves as kind of a mix between a place like Jerry's, some improvement store. I know probably a lot of you have been to Jerry's. Um, and St. Denise. Yeah. So a nice cross between the two. Um, and so just like at St. Vincent de Paul or St. Vinny's, all of that stuff gets donated to them. Um, all of the stuff that you see here has been donated to us by local residents and businesses. And it's going to be put in our store and sold to be reused. Um, but first I wanna to talk to you a little bit about why that's important. So. <clears throat> Everything that we have, everything that we own, comes from the earth. And it comes from the earth in one form or another. So we use natural resources to make our stuff. Everything from our clothing to our uh, books and our sports equipment. It all comes from natural resources. Uh, EcoChick, what are some of the natural resources that we use to make stuff? Uh, well, especially here in our area, wood is one of the most, um, you know, taken from uh, resources here in Oregon. Um, some things that you might not think about actually is water. So water is actually used in processing for almost everything that we make. And so water conservation and clean water is super important too, which you wouldn't necessarily think about that as a thing, but it's used to make so many things. So those are the top two that I think of in our area. But plastics are something that um, I know we have some strong feelings about plastics. But um, one thing to note that is actually my favorite fact of the year of 2020 was 2020 is the first year that human made objects outweigh natural objects on the planet. And that's a really um, important thing to note. And it's sort of a tipping point kind of a fact. And so there's yeah. lots of things we can do though. And so bring, actually, this is one of my favorite places. And um, <laughs> I, I buy things here regularly and I donate things here regularly too. And, and yeah. we get a tax like credit for it. So it's great. Yes, Yeah. absolutely. So yeah, we use, like you mentioned, water and uh, wood uh, to make some of the stuff. We also use, uh, plastic is actually made out of oil or natural gas. Um, and so we have to take that from the earth. We extract it from the earth. Um, our aluminum cans, that's made from rocks and minerals that we dig out of the ground. And oftentimes when we're taking natural resources from the earth, we leave behind these really ugly scars on the plant. Yes, right? yes. It causes a lot of damage to environmental um, systems and to the earth that we cannot repair. So that's, really what we focus on here at Bring. We want to make better use of the stuff that we've already made, which means the resources that we've already extracted from the earth. And we really focus on these R words to help us do that. So what you can do to help um, limit your environmental impact is you can reduce waste. 
choose durable, non-disposable products. You can choose to reject uh, products that come in a lot of packaging that you just end up throwing away. And guess what? You're paying for that packaging. Uh, you can buy in bulk. Uh, you can also choose to repair and choose repairable goods. So instead of just throwing something away, can you fix it? Can it you fix it so that it lives on and those natural resources aren't going to waste? Uh, reuse, and of course, that's our, our favorite one here at Bring because all of the stuff that we sell is going to be reused. So reuse what you have or pass it on to others. Uh, recycle, I think everybody knows that word. And what does it mean to recycle? Well, when we recycle stuff, we take it and turn it into something brand new. So we take the products that we've already used and we use it to make new products. Well, even recycling actually requires a lot of the resources, the, the water for um, processing, um, the fossil fuels to run the machines that will do the recycling. So that actually has its own environmental impact. When we reuse items, we don't have to do any of that processing. We don't have to use the water or the fossil fuels. We just use it as, as it exists. Uh, in that current state. Sometimes you might, you know, uh, manipulate it a little bit, turn it into something, that, you know, make it your own. Uh, but it generally doesn't require as much of the, um, the energy and the resources to reuse. And then one of our favorites, and I know Eco Chick loves this, this word. This is my favorite one, yep. Is rethink. <laughs> so rethink what you're, what you're buying, what you're consuming, we are all, we are all consumers. We like to buy stuff. So we like to buy toys and clothes and food. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff has major environmental impact when, when we're making that stuff. So if you can rethink, maybe if you say, do I really need to buy this? And if you never buy it, you never have to think about what you're going to do with it when you're done using it. So um, there's lots of options for your stuff. When you're done using it, you can choose to throw it away. You can compost your food, your organic material. You can recycle and you can reuse. So let's go see all the stuff that gets reused here at Green. All right, okay. let's do it. Okay, let's go this way. Look at this, you guys. Look at that date. Are you seeing that cool art? Getting you up close. Emily, can you tell us about with this? Yes, Where did so, this come from? Yeah, throughout our site, you're going to see lots of examples of reuse. So here we have um, a bicycle that was made out of some scrap metal that we used to decorate our fence. And we have some really talented employees here at Green who love to make stuff. Uh, and make art. And so when you reuse, you don't have to use the metal, you know, for the originally, you know, uh, the original intent. You can get creative with it. You can, you know, get artistic. So there's lots of examples of that here at our store. We like to practice what we preach. Check out this one, you guys. Look it. Okay, so the door's open, so it looks a little crooked right now, or backwards. A school. No, nice. That's awesome. So creative. Wow. And this is like the drive-through spot where people are gonna receive drop off their goods. Yeah. So this is your. Um, this is where you come to donate to bring. This is our uh, donations area. And it is a nice little drive through here. And you can see behind me, we have some of our staff members who are sorting some of today's donations. And so everything that gets donated to us comes through here. We sort it, we put prices on it, um, and then we separate it and put it out into our store. And all of it goes into different departments to make it easy to find. So just like you would shop different departments at Jerry's or Home Depot, we have the similar departments. 
and it makes it easy for our customers to find. We take all sorts of building materials and you're gonna see those as we walk through the store, but we only take items that we know can get reused because that's the goal. Everything that you see today here at Green would have maybe ended up in the landfill. It maybe would have been thrown away. And the landfill, do you want to tell them what the landfill is? Uh, well, the landfill is otherwise known as the dump or some people, I like to tell them that's where away is. So when we throw things away, yes. it's actually a place and it is called the landfill or the dump is a common term. And so, yeah, and things, um, certain things like metals or other things in food in particular, it doesn't break down when it's stuck together in there. And so um, it's really important to think about ways that we can keep all things out of the landfill except for really what cannot be reused or repurposed in some way. Yes. Yeah. So you can think about that as we walk through. If you could imagine all of this stuff sitting in the dump or the landfill, it would take up enormous amounts of space. So we actually save that from happening. And in our area, um, because of the activity of our community, we've actually been able to um, reduce the amount of time that our mountain of trash is growing, which is really important. So we've woo, made woo, a lot made of strides again, in the last yeah. yeah. And it's actually all of Lane County. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. So I want to show you some of the stuff that we sell here at Green. You can see we've got um, just containers full of that organization. <laughs> Obviously, wiring. This is the wiring department. <laughs> We've got uh, the simple machines, motors in here. If nothing else, you could have fun like taking things apart and putting them back together. Yes, that would Neat. be an excellent skill. A little too. maker. This is fantastic. Cool. You're kind of getting an idea of some of this uh, types of items that we sell here. This goes way beyond that as well. Look at these, we've got bathtubs. So anything that you uh, would need to maybe um, to build a house or remodel a house. Look at this classic pink, pink cheap pink. Yep, the matching toilet <laughs> Yes. <laughs> We have an entire garden department. My oh, nice. So this uh, area, you could imagine in the um, the spring and the summer, it's very busy with folks who are working in their gardens or remodeling their outside landscaping areas. We've got tools um, and uh, we've got different pieces of masonry or like uh, bricks and things that you might want to use outside. All of that stuff will be placed out here. And as you can see, we're outside. So we only like to take things that um, can can live out here until they get until they get purchased. Yes. <laughs> so and then if things do, um, you do have special sometimes too. So sometimes if something they're getting too much of something, they'll put it on sale or kind of like if you're going to a thrift store, they have a certain color day or whatever. And that happens here too. So yes. yeah. And I want all of you at home who are watching right now, I want you to think, is there some project, something that you want to build? Is there something that you've been thinking about working on with your, uh, maybe your um, family or your, um, your neighbors, uh, your siblings, something that you want to build? And I want you to see if you can find anything here at Green that you could use for one of those building projects. I bet there is. We built a little cottage in our backyard and we came down here for some windows and doors. So and we tried to find, look at, there's all the bathroom fixtures. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I got to show you. <laughs> Showing you the totally perfectly, look at, you can have your choice of faucets. Look at all of that. And it's organized so you can just see it all. Look at all the options and faucets for your kitchen sink. This is fantastic. Come on down here when you want to make a new bathroom. <laughs> yep. Got it. So we've got metal. We've got lots of wood, lumber. These big 
Oh, they're huge so beams. Those come from, uh, those are called bridge railings, bridge timbers. Um, and so these huge pieces of wood came off of a, some big, uh, probably, um, you know, highway or bridge. Those are big. Yeah. The size of log that it takes to mill a piece of wood, you can really see the rings of the tree here and how big the tree actually had to be. And the thing that's super important to note is that with forestry in Oregon, a lot of our larger trees like this are, they're few and far between now. We're in a second growth in a lot of our places. And so having wood like this milled is actually kind of rare these days because it, it takes a rather large tree just for one piece of beam. So, and it took a whole lot of water over many, 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 many decades to grow that tree mm -hmm. that we cut down and now it's used as a building material. Mm -hmm. And so if we were to throw this away, we would be wasting all of that water that it took to grow this beautiful, enormous, valuable tree. Excellent. So Point. by saving it, we're, yeah. you know, it's going to get reused and it'll live on. Right. Those resources don't go to waste. Oh my, you guys, they're just sticking out here. You have to see, there's the pink toilet to go with the tub. <laughs> Look at, they're pretty, nice colors. Would you like one of those in your bathroom? <laughs> the pink, the bubble gum pink? No, some people are going retro. Right. But look at this, it's furniture land. Look at all the light fixtures here for the bathroom right above the sink. There you go. We model. Yes, we get lots of furniture donated to us and we sell lots of furniture. The fun thing about the furniture is that um, you can make it your own. You can upcycle it. Maybe you want to paint it, um, add some knobs, uh, you know, and maybe you'll use it, you know, a table as a table or maybe you'll turn it into a, a desk for your room. Mm -hmm. um, the, the possibilities are endless. And like I said, all of this stuff has been donated to us. So it's already been used one time at least. Look at the beautiful table. It's totally awesome shopping. Now, do we think this stuff costs more or less than buying it brand new? What do you think, team? <laughs> If you said less, if you said less, you're right. Give yourself a pat on the back. Um, it definitely costs less to uh, purchase items that have already been used. So when you shop for reused stuff, uh, whether that's at Bring or at St. Vinny's, or maybe you go to Play It Against Sports, mm -hmm. when you shop reused, Mecca. Yeah, Mecca, you're gonna save money. You are saving natural resources. You're preventing pollution and preventing waste. So and you're supporting local small business, which mm -hmm. is one of the most important things is we're keeping our money and our resources here in our area. And that's an important thing to know. Yes, absolutely. So it's a win, 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 win all the way around. <laughs> so we're just gonna walk through the rest of the store here. And so you can see more of the kinds of things Small PE lockers. Some of these lockers actually came out of some 4J schools that are being remodeled and um, updated. Our toilets. Oh, here's the rest of the bathroom. <laughs> Remodel right here. Check out all the toilet choices. Oh God, that one looked yucky. <laughs> The blue sink, you could have the blue sink or maybe the pink. <laughs> Lots of options. <laughs> Eco chick is shopping. I did get here earlier. <laughs> Lots of tile, you know, for your bathroom or your kitchen. Um, here's the just oh, in case. The just in case <laughs> extra piece. We also have hardware. So these are all of the little knobs and hinges and, um, you know, purples nice. that you, you know, maybe need to replace or you need, you know, you lost one somehow. This is our flooring area. So the 
hardwood floor. We've had one time we had um, a basketball, uh, the floor from a, a basketball gym that was donated to us. Really nice old hardwood floor. Mm -hmm. yeah, they don't make it like that no. Oh, check out that classic desk. <laughs> nice. This was actually mine from my house. <laughs> it was really, it's been here for a while now. Are you yeah, kidding? That's yeah, my father in law stuff. That's very funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like Eco Chick is telling us, sometimes things um, they sit here for a while, but sometimes things get placed, they put out on the floor, and they're instantly sold. So, when you come here, shopping is always an adventure. You never know what you're going to find. Mm -hmm. This is our tool cage, which I think is really cool. So we've got all sorts of tools in here, everything from hammers and screwdrivers to power tools like drills and saws. So if you want to learn how to use some of these tools and how to do some repairs or some um, DIY work, you could come here and get some really affordable tools that you and your your parents could use to to um, build and to repair do you want to look awesome. inside yeah, yeah look at they're all organized here's your drills and boxes i'm kind of into all the labels these are awesome so this could be your first starter kit for your all your woodworking and building needs air tools saws and sanders Check it all out. Here's all your hand tools. You've got everything from screwdrivers, pliers, wrenches, flashlight land. This is great. Totally, team. You got to come down here and get started on your next project. Yes. Right. Totally. <laughs> This is great. All right. Okay, leaving last but not least. Tool land. And at the end of our tour here, I want to show you my favorite part of Brain, which is our garden area. This is cool, you guys. So this is the Brain. In. This is called, we call it the Garden of Earthly Delights. And this garden, when uh, when we are in COVID free times, we use this garden as a dimension garden mm -hmm. to show people how you can landscape um, and uh, uh, plant things that are, um, they are low water. Um, they don't need a lot of water. It's all pesticide and herbicide free. You don't need any chemicals to grow your plants or your food. Um, and there's a lot of native plants out here too. So those are good. Um, for and sometimes it, when we're in non covid times, um, workshops for learning right here too. So I came one time and made a really nice stepping stone for my garden. And so there's some different things for adults. Oh, that's that cool. Yes, we like to use this space for um, for workshops when we can show people how to use uh, how to use some of these materials to make some things that they might like uh, you know want. Um, and so, also the best part of this uh, area is all of the creative reuse artwork. So we have lots of artwork out here. I want to show you a few of the the pieces. You don't have to use materials you know, the way they were originally intended, you can get creative with them, like I said before. So we have with this. Oh, I didn't even notice that before. <laughs> this vinyl shed, storage shed. This is what um, we, uh, our parents used to listen to music on <laughs> before CDs were even around. CDs. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, that wasn't that large. <laughs> And these pieces too, these are really cool. They're old pieces of bridge that were brought in. So they're oh, right. kind of massage. And these are beautiful old pieces of cement that um, were molded at some point. Yes. Historic bridge rails. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, bridge that came from. And then over here, there's pieces probably 
every kit, every student that I've ever brought to bring, this is their favorite, their favorite part here. So can you guess? <laughs> Hint. What do you think? Look at the color, you guys. Does that look familiar? We've seen that before. What is this? Can Dance you guess? Of? What shape is that? You might know. Oh, look at, see, we saw a blue theme. <laughs> look at oh, how colorful. Oh, I haven't seen the green. That is awesome. Look at the end. Look at the spiral. That is so cool. Okay, so did you guess that it might be the back of your toilet? The cover of your toilet? This is our toilet top bench. And as you can see, it's beautiful rainbow colors. If you can imagine some of these toilets in your bathroom, that would be pretty funky and fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's say when I moved in my house, yes. that was my color right there. That's the color that we have. Blue, everything. All right, let's go check out this piece here. What do we have going on with the fence? What's that line with? So the fence uh, is uh, put together with uh, cross pieces of PVC pipe that were cut. Um, and as you can see, there's lots of different colors of PVC. Um, but some of the colors have faded over time. That's cool. This is cool. And that's again, the yeah, this nice. yeah, these stepping stones are made out of mosaic tile pieces. So broken tile put together be beautiful again. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. One of my favorite quotes. Sweet. Oh, look at this wall of hearts. This is cool. So did you just invite people to come in and create this or was it employees who came up with this? We had a team that was dedicated to designing this outdoor space. And we had this piece with all of the metal objects was made by a local artist named Jed Turner. Mm -hmm. And he has done a few pieces for us over the years. He loves to shop at Bring and he gets inspired by all of the stuff that we sell here. He has an amazing eye to turn what you what you said earlier, the junk into beautiful artwork. So we are so lucky to have some of his work here. And probably last but not least. <laughs> the <laughs> this is our, our our newest piece of artwork over here. Check this out. Guys, I don't know if I'm going to capture this like you need to. So you're just going to have to come down and get the close up version, but I'm going to try give you the walk around on the outside because it's pretty amazing. Mm. Okay, so tell us about this. Okay, so this is called um, Drago 19, uh, which is an acronym. It stands for Drossian Resource art glenwood object 19 and it is really it's just like an alien spaceship <laughs> that is made out of all of these different pieces of scrap metal that were found all over lane county so we have pieces from sawmills in springfield we have pieces from the civic um stadium that burned down um made into this incredible piece of art it is really, truly, it's like steampunk. It's very um, alien-like and it's interactive. So you can, you can move the, the, uh, the levers, you can see some of the lights that come on. You can, I think this is where you steer the station. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So it's definitely a piece that you would want to see in person. Oh yeah, I'm not doing it justice. You guys got to come down here and mess with some of these things. I think these buttons here have some light action. Just like go on, you just can't see them. Oh, my. This is the inner source with the crystal. Okay. 
So you can come down so and, creative. and play with it yourself. And there's going to be a time capsule underneath this too. When, are, when will that be, um, like, what's the, when will it be, like, opened again, I guess? So they've pl they're planning to, yes. um, they've put together a time capsule and it will be put into, these are all in hollow inside. And so the time capsule will actually go inside of one of these chambers mm -hmm. to be opened at a later time, which is a really yes. cool thing to do on, you know, especially yes. in a year like 2020. Yes, as you all know, it was one of the weirdest years ever mm -hmm. we've ever had. And so Spring wanted to honor that by um, inviting the community to put items into a time capsule which will be buried in this sculpture. And uh, the uh, generation of 2120, so in 100 years, they will open the time capsule and they'll see what our local community members think about the pandemic of 2020, the year of an election, uh, you know, so many crazy things that have happened this year. We're at, you know, we're at the tipping point of of climate change and global, you know, uh, warming. So there's a lot going on right now. We wanted to create a special yeah. way to honor that. So yeah. pretty cool. And so much of moving forward that questions and um, yes. awareness. So it's very important. Yeah. 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 That is awesome. Okay. So funny timing that we have a train right now. I'm going to just turn it over to Ms. Victoria to call on some people that might have questions. Is now a good time for that? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So if you have a question, you can put your virtual hand up so she can see you and she'll call on your name. And so can we like go to like the place? Yes. Like, like... Oh. He asked if you can go to Brink. Oh, yes, you can come here to Brink. Uh, we are located in Glenwood, which is the place right between Eugene and Springfield. Um, you drive all the way down Franklin. Um, you'll take the right and we're, we're located over there. The best way to find us is to look on our website yeah. and get our address. So um, our website is bringrecycling.org. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. How about Trayson? No, I'm okay. Okay. Alex? Oh, uh. What if that the artwork was destroyed? Well, we uh, certainly hope that doesn't happen. We've got, you know, some security over here at our location in um, Glenwood. But, um, you know, as you can see, it's pretty sturdy. It's pretty solid. And I think it's going to last for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's <laughs> welded together. It looks Pretty solid. It took over a year and a half of welding to create this wow. piece. Yeah. How about Hannah Klein? Well, um, like what types of places do you get material from? Okay. Yeah, so we get materials from local residents and businesses. So people just like you and your family bring us these materials. And uh, when you bring them to us, we you know sort them and we put them into our store. We put a price on them. So we really rely on donations from local people. Sometimes we get uh, businesses, um, we get construction companies that um, are doing building projects that they have leftover materials and they will also bring their stuff to bring. So it is possible sometimes you can find brand new materials here as well. Yeah. Um, but otherwise they would have it would have still ended up in the garbage. So we're really um, uh, thankful for those who bring us the donations. Mm -hmm. And if you kids are at some point um, helping your families clean up some things around the house, the really cool thing about Bring is its location. 
it's on the way to the Glenwood transfer station where we take our things that are going to go away. And so you could stop here on the way with a lawn chair or a table or all kinds of different things and they will take it. And on the website, there is a list of things that they don't take. Like I found out light bulbs were not on the list. <laughs> you know, that was, you yeah. know, I didn't know that. Exactly. So, yeah, so, yes. yeah. Like I said, we only take things that we know can get yeah. reused and that are not garbage. So some things are, you know, at the end of their life and they should be thrown away and that's okay. Um, but if there are things that can be reused, that's the stuff that we want. And yeah, just like Eco Chick said, when you um, are cleaning out your garage or your shed in your backyard and you've got materials that have been sitting for a long time, that's the kind of stuff that we want to take here. <clears throat> okay, how about a couple more questions? Kilani? Um, does everything there that you're selling does it have a price? Like all of it costs money? Yes, it does cost money. Um, but when you shop at Bring, you're usually going to um, save some money from if you were buying it that same thing brand new at a store. <clears throat> so yes, every piece of um, a merchandise that we have has a price on it with a marker on the side of it somewhere. Um, sometimes you have to look pretty hard for the price, mm -hmm. but yeah, it costs money, um, but it's it's all discounted from, from a, a brand new item. Yeah. It's like a sale on sale on a sale. It's like great shopping, the best sale shopping you'll ever have. <laughs> and there is a free bin out front too. So there's always a couple of free things out here. You just yes. kind of have to dig through and yeah, yeah, I got a great motorcycle yeah. helmet one time. So you just, yeah. you know. yes. <laughs> and what's cool about Bring also is that we are a nonprofit organization, which means that everything that we sell here, all of the money that we make goes back into uh, our community education programs. So just like what I'm doing with you all right now, teaching you students about uh, waste and reuse, we do the same thing for businesses in our community and other community groups. And so we reinvest all of the money that we make, we reinvest it back into our community. That's kind of what it means to be a nonprofit. Okay, last question. Brandon Price. Um, how long has Bring been a, thing, um, a been a thing? Also, I live really close to Bring. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So I hope you, know you come here frequently. Um, yeah, we have been around for 50 years. Yeah. So the very first Earth Day was in 1971. That was before I was born. Um, and Bring was inspired by Earth Day, the mm -hmm. first Earth Day. There's a lot of organizations at that time that sort of got excited about protecting the Earth and protecting the natural systems that we all, you know, depend on to live. And Bring was one of the very first environmental organizations in Eugene. That's so cool that you mentioned Earth Day too, because mm -hmm. Earth Day this year will be the 51st Earth Day. And the theme this year, there's always a theme every year. And this year it's restore the planet. So ways that we can actually fix some of the things that maybe are going wrong with, um, you know, cleaning up trash is one thing, mm -hmm. rethinking our purchases, all kinds of things, but restoring areas, as um, Emily mentioned earlier, sometimes when businesses are taking materials out of the earth, they leave messes behind and then nothing can grow there, like in mining areas um, in the, you know, Midwest, other places the like that. So, yeah, and so um, restoring these natural habitats and areas so that um, the earth can carry on and be healthy. And that will, would Part of that would be by reusing the yes. resources we already have. Yeah, because restore is another reword. I love those <laughs> words. All the R words. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This has been really awesome just to tour this place and see all the great things you guys are reusing and repurposing and 
a cycling yes. your other yeah. word. I love that. Thank you um, so much for yeah, coming. Thank you. I, I really enjoyed it. So we're gonna make our way over to our read aloud. We're gonna read aloud out here in this spot. Um, and thank you, Miss Emily and You're Eco so Chick. Great for of you to give us our tour today. Yeah. And hey kids, um, Amy will be sharing some resources with you after this visit. And I just wanna do a quick little plug that I'm gonna be starting a green team for kids in our district, a virtual green team, kind of like what I used to do in the school I worked in. And so there will be in the resource a form for you to fill out to show interest. If it's something that you wanna get together with other kids that think like you and care about the planet, that would be the place to do it. And so look for that link in the resource. Yeah, so when I post the recording, you guys, it comes with resources and you can find it right there. Thank you, Miss okay, Emily bye -bye. and Eco Chick. All right, so here we are, just check this out. We just happened to have this book right here. And I'm going to read to you The Dumpster Diver by Janet S. Wong out here in the beautiful garden at spring. Okay, my fingers are a little numb, so I might have problems turning pages, but here we go. Anyone knows you can dive for treasure in the ocean, but our neighbor, Steve, the electrician, dives for buried treasure right smack here in our back street alley. Once a month during fall and winter and spring and every week in the summertime, Steve slinks into the basement storage room. Five minutes later, the dumpster diver comes out. When Steve is ready to dive, he taps five times on my bedroom window. I wave to Steve and knock on Johnny's wall. Johnny hops to his window and shouts upstairs to Lint to Lena in the third floor and the diving team is ready to go. I am hose handler number one, also known as the nozzler. Lena is hose handler number two, also known as the snake charmer. Johnny is the fauceteer. Steve climbs up on the back alley wall, picks a dumpster and dives in beetles and roaches and spiders splash out. I never imagined there were so many millions of legs living 200 feet away from me. Oh boy, let me get it turned. Here we go. Diving rule number one, keep your mouth shut. This is especially important when the roaches start flying. Diving new number, rule number two is don't blow your hose all over the place. This means we hose handlers have to be careful. When Steve climbs out, we hose down the treasure and we also hose down Steve. Being a hose handler is no easy job, especially when Steve is shouting, rule number two, rule number two. Don't allow your hose to go all over the place. Thursday is trash day, but we do our real work on weekends. Last Saturday, we started with a pair of busted skis. Johnny drew, Lena measured, I drilled holes for nuts and bolts and Steve cut with a saw. And soon we had a paraskater. Very creative. Something you might find here at Bring. An old blender became a lamp. An old lamp came, can become a table. And an old table pulls two banged up skateboard plus a ripped crib mattress plus handheld shower plus 20, 32 screws and a roll of duct tape can become anything we want it to be. Yesterday's treasure of the day was an old computer that almost became a flower pot. Johnny's idea, or a fish tank, Lena's idea, or a sculpture, my brilliant idea. But we decided it should be a computer for Zenda on the fifth floor who practices her typing on a piece of cardboard without letters, with the letters written in. Great idea. The Grouch, who lives next door to Steve, says Steve is crazy too lazy to work hard to make enough money to buy new stuff at the store like good people should. She says his apartment is full of junk. 
Steve says, junk is good. Oh, I love his table with the paints on it. That was a clever reuse. The Grouch says, we kids better watch out or we'll get cut up from the trash. But it was Steve who got cut up on broken glass and rusted metal when the dumpster trash collapsed under him. Serves you right. What do you expect digging through the trash? Uh-oh. The Grouch has a point. Starting today, we are going to stop digging through the trash. Starting today, we are going to knock on every door in our apartment building, collecting our own special dumpster diver useful junk. Starting today, we are going to put our useful junk carefully in the basement storage room, except maybe for this old wagon and that broken rocker and this tenant ra tennis racket and that popcorn machine all the stuff we need for a wheelchair for Steve, the number one dumpster diver. And that is The Dumpster Diver by Janet S. Wong and illustrated by David Roberts. Thank you for being here today. It was awesome to have you along. I hope that you can make it down to ring for your next project with your family. And stay tuned, I will send out another email to you guys that will have resources, including Ego Chick stuff. So keep an eye out for that. And we will see you next time. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Borjay.